So Disraeli now faced his greatest challenge on the world stage. And it came to a head here in Berlin in 1878. Disraeli had bullied and threatened the Russians into coming to the conference table. And what followed was one of the greatest diplomatic showdowns of the 19th century. Chosen because of its status as neutral territory at the heart of Europe, Berlin became the setting for what was, in effect, the first global summit. Known to historians as the Congress of Berlin, the summit determined the shape of Europe right up until the First World War. It was a glittering and high-powered affair attended by the representatives of many different countries. But there's no doubt at all about who was the most important person there. The great German diplomat, Prince Otto von Bismarck, gave the game away when he pointed across the room and said to an advisor, Der alte Jude, the old Jew, he's the man. He was referring, of course, to Disraeli, who was 74, he was getting on a bit, but he was the central figure at this Congress. Everything revolved around him, and he protected Britain's interests at every turn. Disraeli was able to exert mastery over the Congress of Berlin, not only because he represented the world's most powerful empire, but also because he possessed a stunning array of diplomatic skills. The most important of these was the technique known as brinkmanship. His talent in that area was vividly demonstrated halfway through the Congress when the Russians succeeded in bringing it to the verge of collapse. Disraeli's most effective weapon against the Russians turned out to be a train. The Russians had already agreed to partition Bulgaria in a certain way. Then they changed their minds and wanted more land. And some of the leaders were happy to go along with it. Disraeli certainly wasn't. So he summoned a special train and threatened the Russians that unless they kept to their word, he would get on the train, go back to London and declare war. Well, it didn't take long for the Russians to climb down and the special train for Disraeli wasn't needed after all. This kind of chutzpah had been a hallmark of Disraeli's entire career, and it now supplied him with stupendous success.